Just a couple days ago, CSS Design Awards released their top 10 websites of 2022 list. Now today, I'm going to react to seeing many of these for the first time on camera. Now in doing so, I'll attempt to describe how they achieved some of their UI goodies. All right, so let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, let's get started. So here is the blog post that has the winners and we're going to start here at the bottom of this list of 10 right here because it shows the lower scores first and the very top score here is 9.26. Alright, so let's start with Daniel Spatsek. Uh, let's check this one out. Let's click the website. Here we go. I haven't checked this one out before. I don't believe so. Alright, so we have a intro loader. So the purpose of that little sequence that you just saw, if I refresh, you're gonna see that, uh, welcome to portfolio of Daniel, blah, blah, blah. But notice at the bottom, and I'll try to sprint, uh, print screen this, right there, loading, right there, I uh, here at the bottom. That was basically so that it can preload some of the assets so that you, know, you can realize the experience first. I have no problem doing that, especially with portfolio websites or something like that. Now we can see this is definitely a type of approach that is, let's say, more creative, especially with all the topography. You wouldn't do anything like this like on a very serious like e-commerce <laughs> website unless you want fired. All right, let's scroll down. All righty. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that is that is very unique. You know, I have this large background image. You can tell it's grainy, but it's kind of meant to be grainy. Um, and then we have this CRT TV, which is being changed on hover. Now, let's check out the stack for this. Um, as we can see, yep, we got the big ones here. Um, if I zoom up, we have 3JS, Pixie.js as well. And these are both, uh, I believe Pixie.js, I don't have much experience with that, but um, obviously animation, JavaScript, graphics, library, GSAP, and then you're using Nuxt as well. All right, so the big the big uh, two are there, Greensock and 3JS. All right, very interesting. I didn't I that screen just showed up because I I focused outside of the window uh, for an X amount of time, so that's cool as well. Oh, I like that. That was very cool. How things it's it starts to basically rotate um, tied to the zoom changes the screen a little bit so it looks like you're going into the screen and now we have an entirely new section side scroller horizontal scroller here you can notice also there's a, a slight bit of uh, smooth scroll but it's not exaggerated it's not too much <laughs> look at that now that's what the 3JS is coming in here for. This is the most obvious usage of it, which is this banana, which I have to say is really high quality. And look at this down here, this kind of like ugly late 1990s style design. All right, so I actually like this, very unique. Good, 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 good stuff. Let's check out the next one, all righty. All right, so this is Tear It with YouTube by Active Theory in YouTube. So we know this is going to be probably pretty crazy. Let's check this out. So this is YouTube hyphen Tear It at AppSpot.com. All right, very nice. We could tell this is already, uh, this feels like 3JS to me, but you know what? It's actually not listing that. So very interesting. Now, if we inspect the sort, Inspect the source here, F12, let's get that out of there. Elements, script, div ID stage. All right, we have a lot here. Wow. So it's obviously using WebGL, 100% certain with these uh, 3D floating uh, flowers occurring here. I don't have my actual audio on, but I'm trying to figure out how to escape, and I, I really, okay, maybe hit an escape right there. So this is more of like a game sort of experience, not, I, it, it's certainly a website, but 
I guess I need, I would need to look at or listen to what exactly is happening here so I understand the full con context. But it's obviously very impressive, but one of those types of uh, immersive website experiences that is sort of difficult. I'll hit skip right here. Dang, I'm trying to hit skip just to get back to the main menu. No, I don't want to discover my soul card. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, you know what? I'm closing this one out. I'm getting bored with it. Let's continue on. We got Kubato Future Club. All right, let's check it out. All right, loading screen for a second. Oh, okay. Again, more WebGL. 3JS we have up here. All right, let's click start. Oh, wow, Jesus, look at this. Let's uh, scroll down here. Wow, yeah, very, so when we talk about uh, page transitions, uh, that right there was a transition, but obviously in 3D form. Explore more. So that is a very unique sort of page transition that I personally haven't seen before. Every time you scroll down, we're going to a different section of this cube. Which is really cool. Yeah, this is excellent. Very nice. Let's check out Lacoste. Uh, draw it yourself by Mercy Mitchell. Let's try, try this one. Loading animation, progress down here, hit accept. Again, more what is likely to be 3JS, yep. Oops, I didn't mean, not mean to click that. All right, so oh, this is from Lacoste. Okay, so you can I draw it yourself. All right, so I can't scroll down, so we can only click draw or gallery. All right, let's try draw. Obviously, look at this. This shirt even waves. And again, this is all possible by shaders in 3JS. So it's tied to the mouse position. So we're able to rotate the model, but it looks like we have a shader that's applied to the model that will physically transform it and kind of wave it. Very, very cool. All right, so what is this? <laughs> so you actually, it's actually an editor. That is very impressive. All right, let's hit this exit out of there. What is this? Draw. Okay, I'm trying to draw. Oh, that's the color. How do I change the color? What in the heck is, oh, there we go. So maybe I could draw in here. There we go. Uh, hi. Look at that, that's really awesome though. We can zoom up with the mouse scroll wheel. All this stuff you can do uh, when you have the canvas element and you're working within 3JS. It kind of just breaks all the rules of regular HTML and CSS. It doesn't break the rules rather, but it's just a, a, an entirely new dynamic from which you can build websites. So of course, check out designcourse.com forward slash AF because I'm currently working on a course that will be bringing in GSAP, Greensock Animation Platform, along with 3JS as well. So this is obviously very cool, love it. Nice, sleek, smooth animations and a very nice kind of built-in uh, kind of graphics editor. Let's continue on. Next up is going to be Mazar, Mazar Destination. This is by Immersive Garden. 
All right, what's happening here? All right, so no loading screen as we saw here. We do have like a, it's kind of is a splash because we do have an enter button here. Let's try that. And more 3JS. <laughs> All righty. That's because there's not many 3JS websites. So the ones that are winning awards are the 3JS websites, or at least have elements that are incorporated into it. So what's really cool here is that we have this 3JS, we have like a huge model, a 3D model in the background here. And on top of it, we have a UI elements, um, like right here. Uh, it looks like a logo up there. I can barely see it though. Um, oh, that's nice. So we can, we actually have a toggle dark mode that's within the 3JS elements. And let's just click on something here. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, okay. We see the little uh, pinpoints that allow you to navigate to different areas. So you click on, this is a, a, basically in this section here is kind of like a, a vertical navigation. Each one that's clicked, we're using JavaScript to then transform and change uh, the scene essentially that's in 3JS. And this is also accessible through the mouse scroll wheel. So I'm just going through each one of these. Look at that. Like, so you can eat, obviously it's really impressive when you have a huge kind of like real complex 3D model like this. But this is something you could do with a very simple element like we saw with the, the banana. Uh, that was tied to the, the, the position and rotation of the element was tied to the scroll, which is something you can definitely do. And maybe I'll do a tutorial on that next week. All right, awesome, love this one. Next up is gonna be 601 Inc. by Garden 8. Loader, all right, comes into place. Again, it just kind of feels like a, a 3JS. Yes, it is. We have green sock and 3JS. Again, designcourse.com forward slash AF. Enter your email to be notified when that course releases. All right, so very cool. We have a uh, kind of like a slide, large typographic section right here that will let you know which slide we're on. And what they're using for this, this is tied to my scroll wheel. Um, and in order to kind of stick to each section, they're likely using, I can't be certain though, um, a scroll trigger from GSAP. Scroll trigger will allow you to do stuff like um, pinning certain sections of the actual layout. Let's click, uh, let's just click on one of these. All right, so notice it was tilted slightly, but you click on it, it brings it to 100% upright, and this is just a video at this point. Click go back, and then you go right back to it. So what's really cool is about each one of these, if I click this, the URL is changing at the top, all right? When I click to these different pages that are in those slides, um, and Notice though, you don't feel like the ch the page changes. Uh, so this is likely done with something. Let me see if there. This is likely. There's a possibility that something like Barba JS is being used here um, to have a page transition animation sort of library. Um, very cool. Like it. Let's continue on. We got Get Ready with Music by. Sp this is going to be. I guarantee you this is gonna be 3JS. Oh, we have more shirt graphics? That'd be weird. Well, let's check it out. Are these gonna be 3D shirt graphics? I only say that's weird because we already saw one. All right, got a loading screen. We're using a mask to reveal everything, a circular mask. And I don't know what's happening here. I'm kind of clicking around and, okay, finally stuff kind of came into to the view. So we have a 3D scene here. And if we look over here, we have, oh, 3JS is not showing up. Very cool. Just tying to the mouse position, the physical location of this. All right, let's, I. Uh, so I can't scroll down, and the only thing it, apparently I can do 
is click connect with Spotify. All right, so I logged in, let's click let's go. All right, pick what you're getting ready for, up for whatever. All right, so this is tied to the scroll wheel. Again, this is just WebGL. Um, apparently, they're not using 3JS. I didn't see that in there. Um, but still, nonetheless, it is. these are 3D objects um, that have shaders applied to them, um, a wave shader. And it's tied to the scroll position. Very cool. Getting stuff done. Let's click Next. Pick your mix of colors. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be. Um, <laughs> let's click add. So we can just turn this disc shape. Very, very cool. Hit next. Wow, look at that. Crisp. Now there's music playing. Maybe I should increase it just a bit. Okay, I can't do that because it's going to screw up the mic. Oh, look at this. So that's a shader effect as well when you have the, the meta balls, as the, what these are called, uh, the, like these, these, these balls that kind of just like join in together. It's like a goo effect. You can do that actually in 3JS uh, or WebGL. It's like mercury essentially. Look at this, this is crazy. And then you're just having fun kind of playing with this. And th the music that's playing may or may not relate to what you're doing in the browser, I'm not sure. And look at this. This is like a 3D in-browser WebGL masterclass, essentially, of all the very cool stuff that you can do. Very nice. Let's check out more. Number two is Jimmy Nelson. So let's check this one out. All right, loading graphic. It's very quick, which is very nice. So that was as, as fast as possible, really. So I have no problem with these as long as you know you're not waiting for you know 10, 20 seconds just for something to load. Hey, what's your name, Gary? Oh, I just hit skip. All right. So I think I what I just saw was um, kind of like this I uh, sort of 3JS WebGL shader effect where they animate in. It was real quick, I'm not sure if you saw it either. Let's click view. Yep, just like that, that is a shader effect. All right, let's check out what's happening. There's a lot happening here in the stack. We see we have uh, React, Greensock Animation Platform. We even have jQuery, 3JS, MailChimp, they have a lot of stuff happening here. I love the type and I love the watermark here in the Mac, the background. Really fits with the theme. We have smooth locomotive scroll. We have a mouse follow. You have a video here. Let's click the menu, see how that comes out. Nice, so basically it's just uh, blurring the background. Uh, we have, notice when we click on this, things kind of animate in sequentially, which you can achieve with uh, Greensock Animation Platform's uh, stagger animation. So just notice there's a lot of like fine details like that that can, can really uh, add to the experience of using a website or an app of some sort. Very nice. Let's check out the very last one, which is the number Wait, no, it's not number one. We're almost there. The Race by Mer Mercy Mitchell. Let's check it out. So obviously, full on WebGL. Uh, looks like a, a loading racing game. Come on, come on, come on, load up. So this one's gonna take, this one's gonna be intense, obviously. There's many assets that it has to load. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to make one of these loaders, literally just my last video, uh, my last two videos, I showed you exactly how to do this. So this is a um, digital production house. Okay, so this is an actual like studio website. So let's click view our work and see what happens. And again, let's look at, we have jQuery being used. So they're not using like some sort of uh, framework like React or Vue. Um, 
which is completely fine. Um, and they're also using 3JS and GreenSock as well. So called that. Let's click on let's click on that one. Scroll to discover. So these are basically case a case study for a specific project that they created. And it looks like it's just screenshots. I've seen this one before as well in the wild last year. Notice how smooth this is. Very just subtle animations like this. Notice how these aren't tied to the location of the thumbnails, the actual titles. All the stuff you can do if you understand JavaScript, obviously as al along with uh, WebGL slash what else? WebGL and 3JS, which is the most popular 3 uh, WebGL framework essentially. Let's click on real. So this is probably just a, uh, a video. What happens when you click contact? Let's play together. Yeah, I did see this before. And there's no bedded form. It's just uh, their contact information right here with these uh, rolling smiley faces and they're reactive to the mouse. Very cool. Let's go ahead and try and check out Coastal World. Again, this is by the same uh, studio. All right, here's Coastal World. All right, this reminds me of that one portfolio where there, uh, there was like an island with a guy on a bicycle. Um, a lot of people saw that. That was a real popular um, 2022 design as well. Start the journey. Look at this, full on WebGL. There's no uh, significant amount of HTML elements here. <laughs> this is all WebGL Canvas stuff. And apparently this is something that's probably gonna take me a little bit too much time uh, it, to, to really um, ugh ascertain just in the context of a quick video where I'm looking at these. Actually, let's just click exit. I wonder if I can just kind of explore so we could check out exactly what's happening. Oh yeah, look at this. Apparently I'm just gonna walk around in this world. This is nuts. Alrighty, I think we get the gist of this one. I uh, just complete full on 3D immersive experience. Very cool. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Hopefully you enjoy checking these out. I tried to explain them as much as possible. And again, it's one of those things when you get to this type of uh, level of work when it comes to UI, UX design, and these immersive experiences, it's a culmination of many different skills. And it's important to remember that pretty much in all of these cases, or most of these cases, there's multiple team members working who have a specific role uh, and specific expertise. It's very difficult to be able to achieve all the different uh, skills that are required in creating one of these uh, sort of immersive experiences. It, goes, it starts from uh, the UI UX uh, phase, uh, 3D, in many cases, being able to model. Um, in 3D has its own world of expertise, like uh, you have the people who uh, create materials and just uh, rigging and animation. Um, then obviously being able to implement this and make it work for a browser requires front end development knowledge, heavy with JavaScript typically, and also an understanding of HTML and CSS in some of these examples. So I uh, don't get too discouraged if you can't make these. Most people can't do it on their own anyway. But I'm gonna do my very best to, to show you all I, how to, to create some things like this on the channel coming up here in this year. And I, it's one of the main things I'm gonna be teaching at designcourse.com forward slash AF. Uh, enter your email to be notified when this course releases this year. And as always, my other course is at designcourse.com, interactive for learning UI, UX, and CSS. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.